it's okay to want space. And it's also okay to delete people. Just don't do it illegally. Energy vampires. They are the bane of every empath's existence. While I already have covered this topic, I thought it would be a great idea to review because there are many people that are still asking me about this. So I'm going to provide seven steps in order to combat or navigate around energy vampires. So what are energy vampires? Well, typically they're individuals who steal the energies of other people. Whether that is intentional or unintentional, but typically it's through how they carry themselves, whether it's their traits, their emotions, behaviors, things of the such. Great examples are those who are narcissistic, very egotistical, emotionally immature, apathetic, full of jealousy and or envy. These individuals can also thrive on drama possessiveness, denial of responsibility, and manipulation. So if you find yourself being around people like this and you're trying to separate yourself from them, there are seven things that you can do to uh, fix the problem. The first step is to identify those around you who may be energy vampires. Some people may be extremely obvious, and then there are those that are very sneaky. But the biggest hint will be your own feelings and how you feel towards that person. If you are feeling physically sleepy or mentally drained, you may want to ask yourself, why? Another huge indicator may be a reluctance to be around the person or fully avoidant in general. If this is the case, your body is instinctively trying to put distance between you and that person. It is also important to point out that the really sneaky ones tend to be the narcissists and those who are charismatic and possessive and manipulative. Because they are very skilled in convincing others it's their fault instead and or that they themselves are not responsible. The second most important step is to understand that it is not your responsibility to try to fix their problems or to try to change them into becoming someone who's not an energy vampire because they themselves have to want to change and actively do things to stop themselves from becoming those energy vampires. If they don't do anything to try to help themselves, chances are you're just feeding your energy to them. And a lot of times these people like to be the victim and you don't want to play into their victimhood. That's, that's not helping. The only way these people can help themselves really is by wanting to and maybe getting some therapy to help reverse it. But other than that, unless you're a trained professional, hired to do this kind of work, it ain't for you. Don't worry about it. It's not your problem. It's not your fault. It ain't your responsibility. The most obvious step, number three, and I will say this over and over and over and over again, boundaries. 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 Boundaries may look different depending on the person, but there are many ways you can do this. The simplest thing you can do is cut them out of your life for good. If they are posing mental or physical harm to you in any way, you may want to do this. Other things you can do is limit your interactions with them. Either stay clear from any events you know that they are going to, and or don't give them any room to interact with you and learn how to control the conversation by short responses with a poker face. These people are really good at reading emotions and social cues to use in their favor to hook you into communicating or interacting with them. Don't fall for it. Just have your poker face, give short responses, and there you go. Don't give them fodder. Don't give them that energy. 
Learn to say no. If you're worried that you're going to look like the a-hole or the villain, who gives a shit, okay? They're gonna believe what they're gonna wanna believe. And that's their problem, not yours. Be confident in your answer. Stick to your guns. Don't give in. If they do see you as the villain, let them. Let them. Let them. You know who you are. That's their problem and proof that they are emotionally immature and manipulative. Rejection is spiritual protection. If they're going to be jerks about it, you don't need them. Because someone who respects you and loves you unconditionally isn't going to act like that. Don't let them guilt you and don't let your past traumas guilt yourself. And don't let them use your past traumas to guilt you. Family members, the toxic ones, of course, are extremely skilled at using their familial position and or use all the things they've done for you to hold over your head. Just remember, those who love you unconditionally will never keep score of things they do or do things with the expectation of something in return, point blank. Those who care about you, who respect you, will do things because they want to do those things, not because they expect you to do something in return for them. And if they do the whole tit for tat bull crap, that is a huge indicator that you need to distance yourself from them. If you have family members like that and you just can't cut them out of your life permanently, I would just say limit your interactions, keep the score clean, don't do things where you might owe them something in return, just don't ask them for favors, period. Now you'll have those in your life, especially those that had or have acted as parental figures or had any kind of parental duty that they will use and throw it back in your face, all right? Technically, as the adult, especially if you're, if you were a child and they were raising you, um, it's their duty to take care of you. You didn't ask to be born. It's their responsibility to raise their children, okay? Things such as clothing, feeding, and sheltering you, that's their responsibility. That's not on you, okay? And a lot of older generation people will be like, oh, well, I raised you. I helped you get into school and blah, 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 blah. <sighs> it's like, as the parent, it is your duty to help the child thrive. Now, obviously, once you hit 18 and older, whatever they do is on them, okay? It's not your responsibility. I know depending on the culture, you might see it differently, especially in Asian cultures or Eastern Asian cultures and cultures similar. It's like you are raised to take care of the parents when you are older. And so I know it's difficult to kind of set yourself apart from those standards, especially if you are in those countries. That is understandable. But I feel like it's also important to take care of yourself mentally and physically and emotionally in order to help other people, okay? And so I know it will be hard to understand or hear or grasp this concept, but again, you did not ask to be born. That was on them. They chose to give birth to you. And if you don't have that kind of parent and they didn't give birth to you, they still chose to have you in their life and raise you. And so that is not your responsibility, especially as a child. Number four, avoid gossiping and spreading rumors or doing anything that puts you in that similar energy field. Because like attracts like and you can attract that energy by doing similar behaviors that can produce energy vampires. 
So just don't put yourself in that space. And not only that, engaging in these activities can be hurtful to others and like spreading rumors and things just spreads misinformation and limits your ability to grow spiritually, emotionally, and intellectually. Number five, practice daily meditations. It could be meditations that are like five to 10 minutes long or 10 to 15 or 30 minutes to an hour, whatever that looks for the person, whatever fits you, it's fine. This can help separate foreign energies from yourself if you put that intention into it. You can gain clarity and outside perspectives. And you can also calm your mind, body, and spirit. The other thing with meditation too is grounding. A lot of these things can be considered to be grounding techniques, but if you wanna go specifically more catered to grounding things, going outside to meditate, touching a tree, things like that, put your feet in salt water, go to the ocean, go to the beach, be one with nature, that will also help. Number six, energy healing. You can do this yourself or find an outside source, but essentially this can help restore and balance energies within yourself. You can also remove negative energies, especially those that are affecting you in negative ways, mentally, physically, spiritually. And number seven, seek a mental health professional. If you are struggling to set boundaries for yourself, need help combating manipulation, trauma, stressors, etc., seeking the help of someone who understands human behavior will help you and give you tailored techniques that will be unique to you, that will help you in your current situation to build your confidence and your boundaries. Sometimes people just need that little push from someone else or maybe just specific techniques that specifically help them with their current situations in order to help them with the energy vampires. So um, yeah, that's really all I have. And uh, let me know, has anybody recently come into this situation? And if so, did you use any of these techniques that I provided? And if not, are there techniques that I may have missed? Lift them down below. And guys, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. I I try to provide educational videos to help combat any issues, to erase fear, and to provide you with a better understanding of things within the spiritual and paranormal aspects of life. So again, thank you guys for watching and I will see you all soon. Peace out.